Hello and welcome back to my RC channel, I'm Andy RC and today I'm looking at another one of these ISDT chargers. Now, previously on the channel I reviewed this, which is the SC620 and I thought it was a pretty good charger. My main issue with it though is that you have to provide your own power supply and while being a compact charger, adding a huge 500 watt power supply would make it not compact at all. Now, Banggood have sent me this. It is the ISDT SC608. <laughs> they have such long names. And this time it's even more compact and has a 150 watt limit, which is more than I need to parallel charge my batteries. What I like about this charger as well is that Banggood sell a suitable power supply for it as well. This is the ISDT CP1607. 162 watt power supply which is ample power for the 150 watt charger but underpowered for the 500 watt charger hopefully they will be releasing a power supply for the 500 watt version however i imagine that will be a pretty hefty device this one is pretty small and it weighs about 350 grams or so. Even better than that, it comes with the missing connectors that in my opinion should be included with the chargers. We have this XT60 pigtail connector and also a power lead now making it plug and play. The power supply isn't cheap though, it comes in at about £44 and the charger is £27, so we are looking at £77 in total. And if you are getting this charger, you most likely want to parallel charge, because this can charge up to 8 amps. So those cost around £12, so you need to take that into consideration also. The system then isn't so compact and becomes a bit clumsy, but that's down to my personal preference, I guess. And there aren't many multiple chargers out there with a built-in power supply, so this is still a good option for the price, I guess. I know a lot of people using these chargers may have taken a laptop power supply and modified it, which is fair enough. But this power supply is purpose-built for this charger. There's no modding of cables and it's got some pretty nice features. It has a wide input voltage of 80 volts to 264 volts, so it can be used pretty much anywhere. It has what they are calling industry grade circuit protection, which I have no idea about, but they are short current protection, overload protection, over voltage protection, and over temperature protection as well, apparently so. So it's got a fan inside as well. As for the charger, the features are very similar to the SC620 that I reviewed previously. We have the bright LCD display, a single dial on the side which scrolls up and down and you press it inwards to select functions. We have up to a 6L balance plug which won't allow you to connect the plug the wrong way which is good. There's a PC link for updating the firmware, but you have to buy that cable separately. And we have the XT60 outlet for the battery and a XT60 on top for the input. As mentioned in the previous review, you can use a LiPo as an input up to a 6S. The menus are the same, so on the main screen we have how many amps we are charging at, as well as how many milliamps have transferred. Then we have the live voltage of the battery that we are charging, and then the individual cell voltages of it as well. And if I scroll down, we can see the input voltage, which is 27.2 volts from that power supply. And again, it seems to be the battery's voltage rounded up to one decimal place. There's also the operating temperature as well. So this charger has a fan underneath to keep it cool. So it's not completely silent. It does make a noise while it's charging. 
if I press in the dial, it takes me into one of the menus. The first option is task, where I can charge the battery or discharge it up to 3 amps or storage charge it to 3.8 volts per cell. Under that we have the battery which allows me to select HV, LiPo, Lion, etc. One of the good things about this charger is that it does charge HV batteries or high voltage batteries which a lot of people are using, I don't myself. You can do NICAD as well but today I'm going to be charging a LiPo so I'm going to select that. I can pick the number of cells. This one is a 1300 milliamp 4 cell battery so I'm selecting 4 cell. Then on to the current. Now as this is a 1300 milliamp LiPo to charge it safely at 1C I need to select 1.3 amps. It gives me the option to charge up to 8 amps but I'll talk more about that later. And then I can select back. Now I didn't go through this other menu but if you long press the dial in for a couple of seconds it gives me another menu and at the top it states max input power. If I select that it lets me change it to 150 watts. Now I'm not sure why that isn't 150 watts as standard. See there's no instructions as to what this does at all however I'm guessing that if you try and draw more than 150 watts it will cut off and not let you do it. That's what I'm hoping anyway. But this power supply is 160 watts and there is an option to allow 160 watts. Surely that would blow the device up, so I'm not sure why that option's there. If I set it to 150 watts, it doesn't turn the charger off. And as I'm using a 160 watt power supply, it mustn't do that. So, I don't know. A 6S battery fully charged is about... 25.2 volts. I'm gonna to have to do some maths now. So if I charge that at 6 amps with watts being volts times the current, it will be charging at about 151 watts, which is over the tolerance of what the charger is capable of doing. We are given the option to charge up to 8 amps, which would definitely blow the charger. So I would hope that setting it to 150 watts in this menu here would stop that from happening, but I can't exactly test that. I'm not going to check whether it's going to blow up in this review. So perhaps they may have already have updated the firmware to ensure that you can't push the charger to the limit. But from this version I have, I would say that that needs doing because I don't want to charge at 160 watts when the charger can only support 150 watts. So charging a 6 cell battery at 5.9 amps will draw, doing some maths again, about 148 watts. So again, that is close to what the charger can tolerate. So I would say that if you are wanting to charge a six cell battery with this charger, ensure that you don't push it too much just for safety. I can't tell you what will happen if we draw too many watts, but I'm going to guess that it's not going to be good. Now, a lot of people will be buying this charger to parallel charge, so you need one of these charging plates that I mentioned earlier with an XT60 connected to it. I have made up a lead here because mine is a Dean's connector. I'm happy to say that with this charger I can charge a 4S at 8 amps, which is the maximum this charger can do. A fully charged 4S battery should come in at around 16.8 volts, just off the top of my head. Therefore, at its peak voltage, charging at 8 amps, the charger will be drawing about 134 watts, so that is well within its tolerance. As I mentioned, I'm using 1300 milliamp 4S batteries here, and I have 6 spare slots on my charging plate, discounting the one that's a Dean's connector. So, to get 1C out of every battery, I'll want to charge it at 7.8 
amps which works out perfect when you divide 1300 milliamp between 8000 milliamps or 8 amps. Of course in practice I rarely do parallel charging that is because I am terrible with my batteries and I struggle to keep the voltages all the same which is what you have to do when you parallel charge. Sorry about that I went on a bit of a rant regarding the power input there of the charger but there you go. Next under that we can change the minimum input voltage but I'm leaving that to 9 volts so nothing more to say about that. You can alter the backlight to low, medium and high which is good. Now volume. This is an important one for me. I often charge my batteries at night and the charger beeps very loud when it's finished and it beeps every time you move through these menus as well so I have turned off the volume. Then we have the language, I think that speaks for itself if you pardon the pun. Firmware share is for upgrading the firmware over the computer, again you need that lead to do that. OS info gives the firmware version that is currently loaded and self-testing again is sort of self-explanatory. You need to remove the battery that you are charging for that to work and it seems to run a quick test of itself. Maybe it's making sure there's no errors with the hardware or software of the device. Then back to the main menu and let's charge this particular battery. So I need to press the dial in once again to the menu and then press start and away it goes the top of the menu turns orange and the percentage of the charge shows as well as a timer so there you go that is my review of the isdt smart charger for the 150 watt version and its 162 watt power supply i'm going to switch this one as my daily driver for now and see how i get on so i'll put links in the description if you wish to get one as always thanks so much for watching please continue to subscribe. Cheers.